And I said, what happened here with this girl will come out to his glory. No doubt about it. We have to believe that or we're not faithful when we quote Romans 8.28. We're simply not. Anyway, okay. Um, breath of life. Go ahead, Linda. You kind of got gypped on that one. Yeah. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. Okay, so how many people were in the ark? Eight. Eight. Yeah, eight. eight in all. And that's mentioned again in Peter. Uh, to Peter, he mentions the eight being saved by the one, or he talks about being an anti-type of baptism and all that. And um, what's that? You were all related to those eight. And the mitochondrial DNA proves that the human race went down to a very limited number and then went back out again. And so it does prove that. Um, people will say, well, that doesn't prove a flood and all that, but it, something happened, and it, that is carried through the woman, not the man, I guess. Anyway, um, we're... The air did go out of the nostrils because birds could care less about a flood. That's right. They, well, most of the birds would have died, but the sea animals wouldn't have. The, the birds, you know, they had to... Well, 150 days, yeah. Well, yeah, the sea animals could Yeah, they're fine. Something had to eat all of the people that drowned and needed to be consumed. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I talked about this before. Real quickly, before I talk about that, it says here, um, uh, it, 2 Peter 2, 4. If God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. Okay, he talked about it there, and he also talked about Noah. Um, hang on one second here. I want to. I think it's in um, one Peter. He mentions Noah, speaking of baptism, and uh, it says here, uh, uh, "Who formerly were disobedient when the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah." This is one Peter. 320, um, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls were saved through the water. So, not only does the Old Testament proclaim that there was a flood, Peter says there was a flood, and there really was a Noah, and there really were eight people that were there. And guess who else talks of Noah's flood? Jesus. Right. Yeah. Jesus mentions the flood of Noah. He also mentions that Jonah was in the belly of a whale. Okay? He also mentions Adam, all right, or Abel, actually. Well, if there was an Abel, there was an Adam. Jesus speaks, and people say he was accommodating his audience. That means he was lying to them uh, a friend, in a friendly way in order to get them to understand a moral truth. That's not what Jesus was doing. He was not accommodating anybody. He was speaking the word of God about what happened and what will happen, because he is the word of God. Okay. Anyway, it says here, who formerly were disobedient. Oh, um, this also, speaking of the, uh, they were saved through the water. This also an antitype, which now saves us. Baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. So, Peter says in 1 Peter 4.21 that baptism saves us. Right? Anybody ever considered that? Does baptism save us? Okay, it, it says it. Must be true. Um, we're going to divert here. I talked about this. A uh, What's that? Okay. I, I'm going to take you through, uh, it, real quickly, we're going to divert from Genesis to talk about an issue, because we're talking about Noah, and we brought up a, uh, a New Testament example of Noah, okay, which is 1 Peter and 2 Peter, all right? So, real quickly, somebody go to Mark 16, all right? And I, we're going to do what I did in a, uh, Sunday, uh, a Wednesday night class uh, a couple weeks ago, and... Uh, uh, Mark 16 and read, I think it's verse 16. Let me see, uh, Mark 16. Yeah, go ahead and read that. Mark 16, 16. Oh, oh yeah, I remember this. Go ahead, read Mark 16, 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Okay, or belief believe. and baptism brings salvation. Did you know that? Here we're Baptists and we say you don't need to be baptized. That's a work, right? But you can believe and not be baptized. That's can you? It just says that's Jesus' own words. I know. We need to make sure we get this right. <laughs> Jesus said you must believe and be baptized in order to be saved, right? That's for the Israelite people. That that's half of it. Okay, well, that, he said maybe the Israelite people only. He said that's half of it. What's the other half? 
he who does not believe is condemned. Okay. Yeah. All right. Condemn. Yeah. Condemnation comes from condemnation comes from not belief. Okay. So non belief. B e l i. I'm sorry, my handwriting is just non belief equals condemnation, but belief and being baptized equals salvation. Now that's confusing, isn't it? And then Peter just said that if you're baptized, right, that saves you. Okay, how do we resolve that as Baptists that believe that it is by faith you are saved, by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of works, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I know I blew that. Anyway, how do we reconcile these two? Because Jesus said this. This says here that condemnation is uh, dependent on non-belief. All right, but salvation is dependent on believing and being baptized. So condemnation does not work here. It only works here. But baptism or salvation works here. Do you see that? Okay. How do we get around that? Somebody go to. We're going to go first to uh, X. Yes. My Bible doesn't say non-believe. I know because it's um, what, what version is it? That believe shall not be damned. Right. So that doesn't mean. Okay, it, it, it probably has a footnote in there that uh, they, they've amended that it. that to me because it says, but he that believeth shall not be damned. Then right. to me that says you don't have to be baptized. Okay. Right. Okay, so this is a problem because we have different source texts to talk about these things. The Byzantine and the Alexandrian, one says one thing, one says another. And then some of them say, guess what, that Mark uh, 16, 8 through the end of the chapter isn't even in the oldest and most reliable text, right? And so they dismiss all of those verses because they're difficult verses, right? This is difficult, but the Lord said this, okay? Salvation is, salvation is conditional on belief and baptism. Condemnation is conditional on non-belief, okay? We, it, there is a resolution. I'm not trying to set you up. I want you to think this through. Somebody go to Acts 2, okay? We're going to real quickly do this because this has to do with the flood of Noah, and we might as well do it now because we'll never get to Acts. I'll be dead before we get to Acts. Um, but go to Acts 2. Peter stands up, and he, uh, he gives his um, uh, big speech, right? And it says here, let me find the verse, and somebody here can read it. Um, if you, yes, where is that? That's 38. Okay, verse 38. It says... Um, uh, then Peter said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, repentance. He says you must repent. What does that mean? Does that mean we say that repentance is kind of a work? All right. All it says is faith is what requires us to save us according to Paul. Okay. So we're going to say that faith equals salvation according to Paul. I want you to understand all of this so that you never have any questions about these difficult verses. Because they are all, they all can be answered. Faith equals salvation. We know that, all right? We already talked a week ago about works from James. Okay, that's right. Your faith is your works. Anyway, we, we went through that, and that's the only way to reconcile that. But anyway, faith equals salvation according to Paul. Peter says repent, okay? That means what we are doing is we are repenting about who Jesus is, not about something we have done. Repentance means to change your mind, to go in a different direction. I'm going in this direction, and now I'm going in this direction. Jesus is the answer to my dilemma. Listen, two years after I was saved, I was still doing the same bad things that I was doing before I was saved. Was I saved or wasn't I? The answer is yes. I just had not come to the point where I could get rid of all of the things that I was doing in my life. Okay, But yes, I was saved the moment I accepted Jesus Christ. But I repented about who Jesus is. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is the only one that can get me to heaven. That is what I'm repenting about. I'm not repenting about my, the things that I can't change in me. Only Christ will change me in His good time. And He did. Yes, go ahead. Oh, you had a question. Well, I was just thinking about children that are baptized. And That's why we don't baptize children. Well, there's been a few issues. Oh, that's fine. You know what? If they're old enough... To say, and as I said a week ago, somebody can be two years old and you walk up and say, do you know that you did wrong? Uh-huh. Do you know that you have to pay a penalty for that? And they know. They know intuitively from the age of awareness. Do you know that Jesus can forgive you of this? If you, that is, uh, that's all that is required. And that's why Jesus speaks of little children. 
Well, we're going to go through that because he said you must believe and be baptized. You must. And I believe that verse belongs there. So we're going to, we're going to clarify this. Okay? Verse 38, you were saying, Peter said to them, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. He's saying that be baptized and your sins will be remitted. Okay? Now, all right? Um, then it goes down here and it says, um, uh, do, 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 many other words. Now, all who believed together had all things in common. Oh, wait, where am I looking for this? Um, uh, okay, then those who gladly received his word were baptized. In this day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. Okay, that's verse um, 41. All right, so it says that repent and be baptized. All right, and then um, I think he says here, you, yeah, in verse 38 it says, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You do this, you do this, and you will get the Holy Spirit, right? That's what he said, and they said they were baptized, okay, gladly. Now, the next one we're going to go to is Acts, probably about chapter 8. Hang on a second here. See, I, was, I should have just stayed in 8. Okay, here's what it says. Then Philip, this is after he talked to the Ethiopian. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one heed, uh, one accord, heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying, blah, 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 came out of him, blah, blah, blah. And then it says here, um, uh, but when they believed as he preached these things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. That's verse um, 12, okay? So, they believed... Here they believed, L-I-E-V-E-D, and then they were next, uh, what's the word for next? Anyway, next baptized, okay? They believed and were baptized, okay? Then, it goes down here, go down to, um, it's read 15 and through 19, somebody. 8, 15 through 19. When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Oh, Spirit. I'm sorry, 14. Start at, four, um, start at 13. <laughs> yeah, and just keep going. Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. Is that right? They hadn't yet received the Holy Spirit. They, were, they believed and they were baptized and they hadn't received the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and finish that up. Um, they had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Into the name of the Lord Jesus. And they hadn't received the Holy Spirit. Go how ahead. Did they know? How did they know they didn't then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Ah, Okay, so they believed, they were baptized, they waited around for Peter and John to show up, got their hands laid on them. Next is hands laid on them. Okay, hands laid. And they received the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, okay? Now, we're going to go to Cornelius in Acts chapter uh, 10. And it says here, um, this is where Peter had the vision, the sheet came down, all the animals on it, three times, right? Eat, yeah, eat and kill and eat, which goes back to the book of Ezekiel, by the way. If you want to know a parallel of that passage, Ezekiel, um, not, not so, Lord, nothing unclean has ever entered into my mouth. I think it's Ezekiel 4. It, it's hearkening back to that. Anyway, um, so it says here, and they called and asked whether Simon, this is verse 18, uh, surname Peter was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Go ahead, 19, read on from somebody. <laughs> while, Peter, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. They heard the word. Uh -huh. Caesarea. They heard the word. It's your job. Heard the word. All right. Okay. It's implied that they believed when they heard the word and they received the Holy Spirit. Keep going to the end. Okay. And those of the circumcision who which would be the Gentiles. Jews, the Jews, circumcision. Yeah, the Jews, right. Who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. <laughs> For they heard them speak with tongues and magnifying God. And Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them, to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then they asked him to stay a few days. Okay, here's a, here's a problem. What do we do in a church? What do we do? 
Do we repent, believe, get baptized, and receive the Holy Spirit? As they did in Jerusalem. Because how many churches out there say, I live in an Acts 2 church, or I worship in an Acts 2 church? 